We thank you for being here to help us celebrate the sound work that our sound branch has selected from the 321 films that qualified for Best Picture. Thank you for being with us, and we hope you enjoy the 96 Oscar Sound Branch Bake Off. Alfie. Countdown reactivated. Alfie, come on. One of the things that I love most about this film is that it's a beautiful canvas for us as sound people to really help tell the story with sound. When there's a lot happening on screen, we're able to use sound to sort of help draw the audience through the scene and through the story moment by moment, depending on what we choose to highlight. Another thing that becomes incredibly important is finding beats of silence within the action so that the sounds that we want to have stand, stand out are able to really be articulated. Tom and Dean did an amazing job in the mixing process, bringing that idea to life. It's rare to have the lead actor in the piece come into the dubbing theater and explain how it sounded on the day where he was. We forget that the, the work that goes into some of these shots where you've got them hanging in a train. There's a sound recordist and a camera operator hanging in harnesses in that train carriage at the same time, getting all the sweat and the grunts and the breaths. So it, for everybody involved, this process is for real. It's not done on a computer or CGI afterwards. And that kind of seeps through into the soundtrack as well. Tom is very keen that we keep the plausibility so that everybody believes this, this immersion that we're showing them. It has to be as true to life as we can possibly make it. It can't be overblown. It can't be ridiculously grand. It has to be true. Making a film with a true soundtrack is a real joy. And it's hard. It's really difficult to find that balance. But they're the only people who know about it. I have told Simpson the various opinions of the community. But what's your opinion? As it's used. Nuclear war, perhaps. All war becomes unthinkable. Until somebody builds a bigger one. Shooting in New Mexico is incredibly challenging. I had to order extra windscreen protection for the microphones because uh, it gets so windy. Then it's dusty and then it rained and then it snowed. I mean, you have all these elements going on and Chris does not want to loop. So it's even more challenging. I insisted on having two boom people work with me because I realized there's so much dialogue in a film like this because that's what Chris wants. Post-production have done an incredible job taking the production sound and making it all work and pulling it all together. historic performance we this performance that was fantastic was broadcast all over the world and i feel obliged to say that maestro bernstein was uh, when we first started talking to bradley about maestro he was talking about recording the orchestra live and we all knew that was going to be a huge undertaking what i think we didn't quite expect is that we had this other extreme of these super intimate scenes conversations just between two characters or between a couple and sometimes they're just like so still and so quiet and they're so delicate that was a part of leonard's music and and what bradley really wanted to you know feel that size difference Thank you. 
Normally, my role as a production sound mixer is primarily get the dialogue, get rid of everything else, the extraneous sounds. Zone of Interest was almost the opposite of that, where my remit was to capture as much detail as possible in what is seemingly quite a mundane environment of a family at home. A lot of the dialogue that was there was kind of incidental chit-chat. John was insistent on hearing every detail of every action, every movement, because of the way he shot with his 10 cameras. He wanted the actors to be free to move around and work in this environment at the same time as one another. So not only did we have to capture an actor or two actors in a particular place, there might be two or three others in, an, in the next room doing something else, and we had to capture it all simultaneously. We had to mic up the environment. My two assistants spent almost two weeks running miles of cable into the house and we divided rooms and corridors into sections and gave each section a mic position according to where the actors might or might not move around within the house or the garden. The mics were hidden out of view. John was very keen that the actors were not seeing any filming paraphernalia while they were performing. And we were running, you know, anything up to 20 tracks at a time of audio. We collaborated at great length with Chris Oddie, the production designer, and Bodie Clare, VFX supervisor, in order to find the best routes around the house for our networks of cables, where they could be hidden behind wallpaper, where they might be painted out with VFX shots. It was a whole world of preparation for us to do something that we don't normally do. In doing this, I think what we did was, was provide Johnny with, you know, one more color in his palette. To all the sound teams, congratulations on being in the Bake Off. Good luck to all of you.